Okay, our first speaker of the day is Federico Carta, and Federico will tell us about CC orientifolds and GV invariants. Take it away, Federico. Thank you. Um, yes, so um, I will talk uh, about um, uh, complete intersection Klabiago orientifolds and uh, Gopo Kumar Vafa invariants for uh, this uh, uh, class of um, Klabiago manifolds. Uh, this is based on um, some uh, works uh, that um, I did uh, in collaboration uh, with um, uh, Jakob Moritz and Alexander Westphal uh, regarding uh, complete intersection Klabiao orientifolds. And uh, regarding computation for uh, Gopak Marvafa um, invariants, uh, working in collaboration with uh, Alessandro Minino, Nicole Righi, and uh, Alexander Westphal. So let me start with the motivation. And in my opinion, one of the main goals of our field of string phenomenology is to produce concrete predictive string theory models, which should ideally reproduce established low energy physics, like get low energy standard model, lambda CDM, or other low energy physics, and possibly extending the established low energy physics by making a new prediction, like understanding the origin of dark matter, a SUSE or non SUSE extension of standard model, and so on. And one way we can use to make string theory models is, for example, start with a type 2 string. And since type 2 string is a 10 dimensional, we need to compactify in order to get four dimensional physics. And the typical setup is to compactify on a six dimensional compact uh, Calabiao threefold. Now, uh, type two string has 32 supercharges, Calabiao threefold breaks three fourths of the supercharges. We end up with eight supercharges in four dimension. That is a 4dn equal to two super gravity. In order to make more realistic uh, models, uh, it's typically considered uh, um, uh, to uh, take an orientifold of uh, the um, uh, Calabiao manifold. So in particular, uh, we mod out by an orientifold action, which uh, uh, is uh, taking this form, omega r, r minus one to the <coughs> FL, where omega is essentially worksheet parity. R is a geometric Z2 action acting on the compactification space. And this is a minus one to the left moving space time fermion number, which is just required in order for this to square to one. Let me focus now on um, type 2B string, and uh, in particular with an orientifold action allowing for O3, O7 planes. Uh, recall that uh, we called O plane uh, the locus of fixed point under the orientifold action. And uh, we focus on this uh, corner of the landscape because this is a typical uh, setup for uh, um, uh, model building, uh, and in particular, this is a typical setup for a flux uh, uh, landscape. Uh, now, the crucial point uh, that uh, um, I wanted to say is that the uh, properties, uh, geometrical properties of the uh, compactification space will fix properties of the low energy four dimensional effective field theory. So, if one wants to make a concrete model building, it's extremely important to know your compactification manifold, know it well, know its properties. And uh, it's uh, with this uh, spirit that uh, we make uh, a database of uh, all these uh, possible orientifolds. Uh, in the uh, case of complete intersection uh, Calabiaus. So let me say some words about uh, how the geometric uh, properties of the compactification space uh, reflect uh, into uh, properties of the four dimensional effective field theory. The identical action in induces a splitting of the Dolbo homology of uh, the Calabiao, and in particular, uh, cohomology group uh, HPQ of X will split in uh, even and odd part. And uh, the dimension of the even and odd uh, uh, cohomology groups uh, will count the number of fields in the four dimensional effective field theory of a given type. We have uh, H21 minus complex structure moduli, which can be stabilized by fluxes, H11 plus scalar moduli, which need to be stabilized by non perturbative effects in type 2B. But we also have H11 minus C2 and B2 axions, which are interesting because uh, in many models they are light. So maybe they could be um, candidates for uh, dark matter uh, axion particles or maybe inflaton. And uh, we also have uh, H1 plus uh, U1 vector multiplets. Now, before our work uh, uh, in the literature, uh, orientifolds with H11 minus different than zero appeared very sparsely. Of course, we knew they were possible. In fact, uh, there is this nice paper, nice paper by Gao and Shukla that explicitly construct uh, examples of them uh, in Carrizo's Karke, but uh, there was no systematic uh, large scale construction of this. 
So this motivated us uh, to uh, look for uh, uh, this type of orientifolds folds with H11 minus different from zero. And uh, we focus uh, on the um, orientifold of this type inside the database of complete intersection Calabiao uh, manifolds. Let me uh, briefly uh, recall what uh, are uh, these manifolds and how they are constructed. They are defined as the zero locus of a set of homogeneous polynomials in an ambient space given by a product of complex uh, projective spaces. The multi degrees of this set of polynomials are encoded in a so-called configuration matrix, uh, which I'm giving an example here. So we have one factor of the ambient space per row and we have one polynomial per column. For example, the polynomial P1, which corresponds to the first column has a degree zero in the coordinates of the first P2, degree two in the coordinates of the second P2, degree one in the coordinates of the P3, as you can see here. Now, crucially, if I want this uh, set of uh, polynomial equation to define a threefold, the total dimension of the ambient space given by the sum of the dimension of the projective spaces minus the number of polynomial equations should be equal to three. There is uh, another uh, uh, constraint coming from the vanishing of the first chunk class in order to define a Calabiao manifold. We need the sum of uh, all the entries in every row to be one plus the dimension of the corresponding uh, CPN. Now, one can naively think, uh, one could naively think that uh, we can build infinitely many Calabiaos uh, in this way because one can think, okay, let's make a uh, configuration matrix bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, so we have ambient space um, bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger number of polynomial equation uh, still giving me a threefold. This uh, is uh, very wrong. It was uh, known since uh, 87 that uh, there, is, uh, there are at most uh, 7,890 possibly distinct Calabiao that can be constructed uh, in this way. Let me just add uh, now a small technical remark. Uh, there is a notion of favorability uh, in the sense that uh, Calabiao, uh, complete intersection Calabiao is called favorable if uh, all uh, its uh, divisor descend from pullback of divisor of the ambient space. Not all uh, the complete intersection Calabiao are favorable. And uh, in this nice paper by Anderson, Gauguere and Lee, uh, it was uh, uh, constructed a list that is the maximally uh, favorableized list of complete intersection Calabiao in the sense that for every uh, CC that uh, was not favorable in the list of Candelas, uh, for almost all of them, uh, a configuration matrix which leads to the same Calabiao but now it's favorable was given. And it's important for what we do uh, to work with favorable uh, Calabiaos. So we want to look for orientifolds, and uh, in particular, uh, since we have ambient space and polynomials, uh, we can uh, first of all consider all the involution of the ambient space, and then uh, we can consider all the ways the polynomial map into each other. For the involution of the ambient space, we can swap identical PN factors, or we can invert some of the coordinates of a non-swapped PN factor. For the ways in which the polynomials can map into each other, we can have a polynomial map to itself or minus itself, or two polynomials being uh, swapped. Mo now, uh, two comments. First one is that uh, most of the choices for this uh, involution will give rise to a singular manifold. This is uh, very intuitive, and uh, uh, I will explain it uh, in an example. Let's consider the quintic, and let's consider uh, a case uh, in which uh, we flip just one of the coordinates of the ambient space uh, CP4 without loss of generality x0. Uh, and uh, we map the polynomial to itself. Now, it's uh, clear that the generic degree five polynomial will not be mapped to itself by uh, this uh, thing, because for example, the monomial x zero to the five will not be mapped to itself. So in order for the z two involution to be present in the first place, we need to do complex structure uh, tuning. We will need, for example, to set to zero the coefficient in front x zero to the five of this polynomial. Now, since we are doing a tuning of complex structure in order to have the orientifold action present at the first place, then it's natural that we will have a singular manifold. The other comment is that many of these choices are equivalent to each other. Uh, so uh, let, let's make an easy example. If we take P2 and we consider a Z2 action of flipping one coordinate or flipping the second two, the two of them are obviously equivalent because of the usual P2 scaling. I can just multiply by minus one all the coordinates uh, in the uh, equation three and I get to the uh, equation two. So what we want to do, we want to, do, uh, we want to make a, um, a computer program, a computer program that lists all this uh, possible involution. I will comment uh, more uh, later about um, 
the singularities. Uh, let me now jump to the result of the scan that we do. Uh, we find an explicit database of 2 million orienti folds, uh, and uh, for each one of them, we compute quantities uh, like the uh, H11 odd and uh, H21 odd, the D3 tadpole. Uh, we give a configuration matrix for the divisor that is uh, wrapped by the O7 planes, and uh, so on. This list is uh, publicly available uh, in the uh, webpage of Alexander Westphal. And uh, we find that uh, uh, the cases with the non-zero H11 minus are actually quite generic. So we find uh, many cases with non-zero H11 minus. This came with a pleasant uh, surprise for us and uh, in my opinion motivates uh, future model building uh, involving uh, two form uh, axions. Very good. Now let us uh, discuss more about the singularities because this is maybe the most interesting uh, uh, point. We, we find the singularities at codimension one and codimension three. And uh, we identify and drop from the database all the cases of singularities of codimension one. And this was a non-trivial uh, part of uh, the code. And, but I will not uh, say more about uh, codimension one singularities. Regarding codimension three singularities, they are uh, particularly interesting because codimension three in a trifold is a point, and these singularities are, are generically conifold points that lie on the fixed surfaces. So they are conifold points on top of all planes. And uh, uh, we can see how they arise by um, because they arise whenever a set of antisymmetric uh, polynomial that are antisymmetric across the fixed locus uh, as uh, uh, vanishing uh, uh, differentials uh, in such a way. Now, so we find in various cases that we have conifold points on top of O7 planes. One crucial property of these uh, conifolds is that uh, the orientifold projects out the deformation branch. So the deformed conifold is taking this form, XV, XY minus UV equal epsilon, the deformation parameter. And uh, locally, the orientifold action is flipping the V and Y coordinates. And you can see this is a symmetry only if the deformation parameter is zero. So we have these conifolds on top of the plane. We cannot deform them. So we call them frozen conifolds. Uh, however, you can resolve the frozen conifolds. In fact, you can resolve them in two ways, just as the usual uh, conifold admits two resolution connected by flop. Let me call alpha and beta the homogeneous coordinate of the resolution P1. We have two uh, resolution, which we call A type and B type, that locally takes um, the following form. Uh, in order to argue that uh, these resolution branches are allowed by the orientifold, uh, I need to uh, discuss how the orientifold fold acts uh, on uh, <coughs> this, uh, the resolution P1. And uh, we can see that um, uh, in a local description, so there are just two possible ways in which the orientifold fold can act. Can uh, uh, reverse uh, one of the coordinates uh, with, without loss of generality, we can take uh, first one, uh, and, uh, or can just leave uh, the P1 completely fixed. So in the case in which uh, flips one of the coordinate, which is the A-type resolution, we have two fixed points, one zero and zero one. And uh, we, could, we can see that the one zero point lies on the fixed divisor, while the zero one is an isolated fixed point. So what is the interpretation of this? In this resolution branch, there is an O7 plane wrapping uh, this uh, um, uh, for cycle plus uh, a distant O3 that is corresponding from the uh, isolated fixed point, and they are separated to each other. In the B-type resolution, the resolution P1 is completely fixed. Huh? So the picture is that there is an O-plane, but now the O-plane is wrapping C2 blown up at the point. So we are led to the concept of this uh, frozen conifold transition, which uh, work in the following way. So we are in the resolution A cycle. We have the O7, the O3. Uh, and now the O3 can uh, get closer to the O7, eventually collides to the O7. When it collides, uh, this is the same as having the O7 with a conifold point on top of it. And then uh, you can uh, follow it uh, in the flopped uh, uh, direction uh, in the resolution B side. And what happens is that the O7 eats the O3 and it converts it to geometry. So the O3 disappears uh, and now the uh, O7 is uh, wrapping uh, uh, locally a C2 blown up uh, at a point. 
I said this story just with a single uh, uh, O3 for uh, simplicity. In general, you will find uh, many O3 planes lying on the O7. And uh, when you go to the B cycle, uh, uh, to the B, um, uh, the B resolution branch, then uh, uh, they will, uh, um, they, there will be uh, many blow ups uh, corresponding to the number of uh, the O3 planes. Notice finally that this is consistent with the modification of the D3 tuple. Uh, we have uh, one O3 that uh, disappears uh, and this uh, induces a modification of the D3 tuple, but also there is now a blow up uh, uh, of the, on the cycle wrapped by the O7. So the Euler characteristic of uh, this four cycle will change and the D3 tuple will change uh, accordingly. Now, uh, we have seen that you can access the resolution branch in two ways and you can ask, uh, hey, how generic is this? Is this happening always uh, in your oriented folds or not? Or it's a very peculiar thing. We see it's very generic. It's happening uh, essentially <clears throat> always. This is a plot of the number of frozen conifolds that uh, we have versus the number of oriented folds that we have with that number of frozen conifolds. We see that uh, <clears throat> uh, we can get up to around 70 frozen conifolds and the distribution is picked around uh, 30. Also, um, we can uh, <clears throat> find a new um, Calabiaus by following uh, um, the resolution. So we go from the singular uh, frozen conifold to the resolved side. Since we are going from singular to resolved conifold, the Euler characteristic strictly increases. And uh, we find cases that are uh, even out of the original CC list. So we find oriented folds of manifolds uh, which uh, are uh, out of the original CC list. I recall that uh, CCs have negative uh, <coughs> uh, Euler characteristic. Very good. So it's very um, suggestive that uh, the plot of Euler characteristic is somehow getting symmetrized by this operation. So we could maybe speculate uh, this uh, um, n equal to one uh, geometric transition are connecting uh, CCs to mirror CCs, maybe. Uh, we don't really know, so I don't want to make this claim. We still don't know many properties of the manifolds we can reach by uh, this construction. Let me stop talking about oriented folds. Let me talk about another uh, properties of complete intersection Calabiaus that we uh, look into. Some of the configuration matrices in the original CC list uh, actually define the same Calabiao. And uh, what do we mean by same Calabiao? Uh, we have uh, uh, the Wall theorem that we can use. The Wall theorem says that uh, if two Calabiaos uh, have the same merge numbers, and then uh, you can fix a base um, in H2 such that integrals of the second chain class agree, and also triple intersection numbers agree, then the two Calabiaus are diffeomorphic as real manifolds. So one can play this game. We can look in the list to uh, complete intersection Calabiaus that have the same Hodge diamond, naively different uh, integrals of C2 and triple intersection numbers. And we can look if we find a change of base such that we make these latter quantities agree. Something of this type was already done uh, in 1990 by uh, Candelas and He and uh, recently by Anderson and Lucas. Uh, we do it uh, uh, again, we find uh, more redundancies uh, than uh, what they found in these previous papers, essentially because we are now using uh, the maximally favorized CC list and not the original CC list. Okay, so we find a class of uh, thousand redundancies uh, of configuration matrix that just give you the same Calabiao. So if one wants to make a minimal set of complete intersection Calabiaos, you could just uh, drop them. Let me move to a second type of database that uh, we compute, uh, which is uh, <clears throat> uh, conceptually not related to the first one. Uh, we compute a list of uh, the Gopakumar Rafa invariants for this class of uh, complete intersection Calabiao manifolds. Uh, these are uh, topological invariants of uh, Calabiao threefold. We would roughly count the number of uh, holomorphic maps uh, from a genus G Riemann surface sigma G to a two cycle class. Uh, it's uh, uh, very good and uh, useful to know the numerical values of these uh, numbers for the configuration space you pick for your model building. For example, say you do model building in uh, uh, type 2B and the Keller potential for complex structure and the large complex structure limit is taken in this form. 
where we have a part depending just on triple intersection numbers of the mirror manifold, uh, plus a part that depends explicitly on the uh, Gopak-Marvafa invariance. So in just even to write the Keller potential uh, completely, you need to have uh, this information. You need to know this information. The technique for computing uh, gopak marvafa invariance at genus zero for complete intersection Calabi-Aus uh, has been known uh, since 1994. So it's an old story uh, explained in this paper by Ozono, Clem, Tyson, and Yao. I will br briefly recall it now. So uh, we can uh, go in the mirror side, in the, the type 2b side, and we have uh, the period vector, which is given by the integral of the three form omega over a uh, base of uh, sym symplectic base of uh, 2h to 1 plus 2 3 cycle uh, of the uh, mirror Calabiao. And uh, this uh, period vector satisfies some uh, differential equation known as the Picard Fuchs uh, uh, system. Crucially, the solution for the Picard Fuchs uh, system for complete the mirrors of complete intersection Calabiaus uh, is known in general. And uh, it just depends on data that you can read immediately from the configuration matrix. In particular, the first component of the period vector takes uh, this form, which is like a formal uh, series in the complex uh, structures uh, ZIs, and some coefficients that I'm not writing the explicit form, but uh, I tell you they can be read immediately from the configuration matrix. Now, one can uh, uh, construct uh, these other uh, uh, functions, uh, wi's, which are uh, related, uh, but not exactly equal to the other components, not the first one of the period vector. And uh, in particular, this uh, Cn depends uh, on the, this uh, um, h to one uh, integers uh, n. So you can uh, write a shifted version of the Cn. And uh, in terms of this, you can write this function wi. And now the Kähler moduli on the type 2a side are related to the complex structure moduli on the type to be mirror by the so-called mirror map, which is uh, this one. And uh, the next step in this uh, algorithm, which is the hardest in every attempted in implementation of, of this algorithm, is that we need to invert this equation in order to get uh, the z's as a function of the t's. So after we have the complex structures as a function of the Kähler moduli, we can uh, uh, compute the quantum corrected triple intersection numbers uh, in the uh, uh, type to be mirror side, and uh, we can match it with the one in the uh, type to a uh, side, in which the gopak marvafa invariance at genus zero explicitly appear, uh, multiplying uh, the correction terms that are due to worksheet instantons, and here we see the multi-coverings uh, in the denominator, no? platistic exponential of uh, the uh, Q uh, else. From matching uh, this uh, uh, computation in the B side and the computation in the uh, A side, one can extract explicitly the Gopakumarvaf invariance of genus zero. Very good. So uh, this uh, above algorithm has actually been already coded in a program by Clement Kruiser. So what we, do, we did is take this code, uh, make a modification, parallelize it, and run it. Uh, and now some of you might object and say, hey, Federico, what you're doing is uh, trivial, no? You are uh, taking a uh, code that is already present uh, and you're just uh, running it and you're just uh, getting the output. Uh, this is true uh, uh, in some sense. However, uh, um, I want to stress that uh, the computational effort was uh, quite big and uh, it wouldn't have been probably for sure impossible at the time in which uh, this uh, code was uh, created. We took uh, six months on two different clusters, uh, DAISY and IFT, and uh, we ended up computing uh, the list of all genus zero GV up to degree 10 for all the favorable complete intersection Calabi-Aus up to H11 equal to nine. I guess the spirit of this computation is that uh, I think he had to be done we wanted to do it one and for all and make the list uh, such that if uh, any of uh, us uh, or you in the future wants to know what is the value of this or that uh, GV invariant, you don't need to compute. You just need to click on a file and read the number. So what do we find from this uh, scan? We find something. Uh, we find that uh, there are directions inside, inside the Picard lattice uh, in which the GV invariants grow at uh, hierarchical rates. Meaning uh, they grow exponentially uh, faster or uh, slower uh, at different direction. Uh, this was already um, 
Uh, okay, this one, and uh, we also find direction in which uh, the Gopakumagva invariants eventually vanish with the degree. Uh, this uh, last uh, uh, last uh, thing was uh, actually commented uh, in a recent paper by a, a Cornell group uh, for cases in the cruises Karka database. We see it also in the CCs. We also find direction inside the Picard lattice in which the Gopakumagva invariants don't eventually die or uh, diverge uh, exponentially, but they actually just uh, periodically oscillate. So they don't, they are almost constant. They don't grow too much or they don't decrease too much. They just uh, oscillate periodically forever. The full list uh, is available uh, uh, at Alexander Westphal uh, website. And uh, let me now just uh, show a picture uh, about uh, what is a typical uh, structure that uh, we see. So this is a, a picture of um, uh, H2 of uh, this Calabiao Comasi. So this is H11 equal to two. So it's just a two dimensional uh, plot of the uh, Kelecon. And uh, the blue dots are where we see non-vanishing uh, GV invariants. Orange dot is where we did not compute, but we think it's non-vanishing. Black dot is uh, computed and vanishing. So we see, for example, there is this direction in which uh, the GV invariants eventually vanish. This is related to the fact that uh, there is a conifold transition of this uh, uh, CC to the Quintic, which uh, um, essentially is related to just uh, projecting all this direction into the vertical one, which is the killer cone of the Quintic. Uh, we also have a direction in which the GV invariants are always non-zero uh, and uh, uh, diverge exponentially. And then uh, in cases which are not uh, this one, um, uh, we find the direction in which uh, they uh, are periodically repeating uh, themselves when you move in the killer cone. So uh, one thing that we empirically find, and uh, uh, I don't have uh, an understanding of uh, this thing uh, yet at the moment, is that uh, the cases in which there is a periodic direction are uh, uh, exactly the cases in which the Calabiao uh, is elliptically fibered. Uh, I find this an interesting empirical observation, and I do not know, I do not know uh, how much this was studied or understood before, and uh, I do not know what is the precise uh, relation for uh, the precise, uh, uh, yes, um, relation between these two, two things. I just wanted to comment this fact. So let me quickly conclude. Uh, we compute a database of the uh, 307 uh, oriented faults for the CCs, uh, and we compute quantities of these oriented faults. So we observe a phenomenon of frozen conifolds and frozen conifold transition connecting CCs to a larger set of potentially even new Calabiao manifolds. We compute a database of genus zero GV invariants, and uh, we observe uh, different behaviors of the GV invariants as uh, you move in the Kehler uh, cone. Uh, we also identify redundancies of the CC list. Let me finish by just uh, flashing a slide about future directions I find interesting. Okay, thank you very much, Federico, for your excellent talk. Let us all thank uh, Federico with our clap emojis. Um, so while we wait for other questions, let, let me ask uh, at least one. Um, so for these frozen conifold transitions where you move outside of the CC list, do, do you have an embedding space for these geometries? Uh, wh no. What do you know about them? No, we, we, we don't know. We, we don't okay. have uh, an embedding, uh, embedding geometry. We, we can it. compute H11 minus H21 minus for them. We can uh, compute quantities like, uh, for example, uh, Euler characteristic. Mm. Um, but uh, so in this is not enough uh, to get uh, the full uh, odd number. So like we cannot get, uh, for example, H1 plus and H1 plus. Um, we, we don't know triple intersection numbers, for example. Mm. Ah, okay. uh, we don't know many things. It's, uh, I think it's uh, very interesting to, to study. Mm -hmm. what yeah, this, uh, I don't even know, for example, if they can be uh, complete intersection in Tori Cambian space, or if it's mm -hmm. something uh, even different from that, I, I don't know. So maybe um, some of my collaborators have uh, more understanding, but uh, this this is what I can tell you on my side. Okay, really, really interesting. Um, 
it looks like uh, so Cameron has a question, but Callum has a comment about uh, what I just brought up. So maybe let's go. Let's do Callum first, and then we can go to Cameron. Hi, thanks. Um, yeah, thanks for the nice talk, Federico. Um, these are the spaces on the other side of the conifold that you talked about. Um, are these the same? So I think you were there in my talk a while ago where I talked about um, finding these flops as like toric, in toric ambient spaces, mm -hmm. um, realizing these flop spaces are toric. Are these the same things? It seemed like that to me, but maybe you have a different perspective. Um, yeah, so I think your talk was, uh, uh, let's say, n equal to two story. So you are not taking oriented faults, you are just taking this, yeah. the, the Calabria geometry. So what we um, uh, see is, um, is the following. L let me make an example. We know there is a, a CC that uh, if you do conifold to, uh, through 16 points, uh, you go to the quintic. And uh, we find an oriented fold of the quintic, okay? And this oriented fold has frozen conifolds. We can resolve it and uh, we end up uh, in a CC that uh, is exactly the one that uh, would have gone uh, to the quintic plus the oriented fold on top. Okay, so this is uh, something that is kind of expected. You have the n equal to two transition and then you do the oriented fold in two sides. What we find is that there are many other cases in which uh, when you do the oriented fold, you don't end up in uh, a, a, a geometry that is the oriented fold of a CC. It is uh, something else. Yes, but is it possible to understand these oriented folds as, sorry, these other calabiales as oriented folds of the flopped original space? Can I, can I sort of flop and then orient a fold instead of orient a folding maybe, and then? Uh, may, maybe, that, yes. Is that the right way to? Maybe, maybe, maybe yes. Uh, I, I don't know. We, we didn't, um, maybe it is related. Uh, I don't know. What, what is, um, One thing that uh, puts me in the direction of saying no mm. uh, is that um, I, I think that uh, if you flop, uh, you should not uh, change uh, Hodge diamond. So you should not change Euler characteristic. While uh, we find that uh, when we go in the resolve side, uh, we find the uh, oriented folds of Calabiaus, which have uh, even positive Euler characteristic. So, it, if you oriented for the flopped side of a CC, I think maybe you should have the same Euler characteristic of the original CC. Hmm. Okay, yeah, cool, interesting. So, uh, I don't know. Yeah, cool, thanks. I might ask you about this some more later on. Thanks a lot. Okay, our next question is from Cameron. Thank you, uh, very nice talk, Federico. Uh, question for you, you had mentioned about periodic patterns of uh, BPS invariants. Uh, for the, you said that you observed that this is only in the elliptic case. First of all, a uh, number of questions. Do they always appear in the elliptic case? In other words, whenever you have elliptic ones, do you get always these patterns? Secondly, are they, um, are they uh, related in any way to the geometrical properties of elliptic people? For example, the number of sections that it might have. Um, so, so, and in which direction are we talking about? Are we going in a particular direction where you see these periodicities? Yeah. Okay, th thank you very much, uh, all excellent questions. So um, for the complete intersection Calabiaus, uh, there is, a, for some of them, uh, the fact that they admit an elliptic vibration has been uh, confirmed and you can see it just from the configuration matrix. These are the so-called obvious vibration. Then there might be also other Calabiaus that admit uh, vibration, but not in such obvious, obvious way. What uh, we have uh, checked in uh, uh, examples, but not completely because we realized that this uh, fact uh, like couple of days ago, actually, uh, is uh, that uh, um, in uh, many cases in which uh, you do have the obvious vibration, then uh, if you look at the boundary of the Keller cone, there is a direction in the boundary of the Keller cone in which the GV invariants periodically oscillate. They periodically oscillate. Uh, and in cases in which you for sure don't have an elliptic vibration, this thing uh, is not happening. Uh, uh, for example, I don't know, the Quintic, uh, this thing is not happening. Uh, I cannot say we check this in the full uh, uh, list of the CCs. is something I plan to do in the next uh, days. Uh, for the moment, I don't know. We just uh, 
observed this in a number of uh, cases. Uh, I have absolutely no uh, insight uh, about uh, the relation between the geometry properties of the elliptic vibration and this behavior of the GV at the moment. I'm sorry for that. So for that is just empirical observation in a number of a hundred or so cases. Do you have a case where the period is one, it repeats? Not, no, I don't think so. So it's always more than one. Yeah, it's more, always more than one, but it's, it's a small variation. I have cases with, which is like three or four or something like that. Okay. It's not too huge. Okay, thanks. Okay, we have time for uh, one quick comment from Jakob, and then we uh, probably need to move on. Um, yeah, hi. Um, I just wanted to make a, um, a quick comment regarding uh, Callum's question. And um, so, th so the, the reason why, um, why, it's, why it's hard to find, to, to give a good description of the, uh, of the uh, resolve phase is that if you try to play the usual game, producing a, a P1 and writing uh, and, and spitting your equation into a, into a, into a determinant, um, you just can't make sense out of the, out of the individual equations due to, due to the toric weights. But um, I actually expect that if you play the same, uh, a similar game as you did in your paper, um, that um, one could at least for some cases, maybe not all of them, find a good description as a CC in, uh, in, in, in a more general torque ambient space. So I think that would be super interesting to, to, um, to find out. Cool, yeah, thanks a lot. 